Hello, this is Dr. Do again. This video is outside of medicine. Continue to read the Iliad by Homer. I'm going to continue to read. And there at the palace, Hector's mother met her son, that warm, good hearted woman, going in with Laudice, the loveliest daughter, Hecuba, ever bred. His mother clutched his hand and urged him, called his name, My child, why have you left the bitter fighting? Why have you come home? Look how they were they wear you out. The sons of Achaea curse them, battling around our walls, and that is why your spirit brought you back to Troy. To climb the heights and stretch your arms to Zeus. But wait, I will bring you some honeyed mellow wine. Pour out cups to Father Zeus and other gods, then refresh yourself. If you'd like to quench your thirst, when a man's exhausted, wine will build his strength. Better weary as you are, fighting for your people. But Hector shook his head, his helmet flashing. Don't offer me mellow wine, mother, not now. You'd sap my limbs, I'd lose my nerve for war. And I'd be ashamed to pour a glistering cup to Zeus with unwashed hands. I am splattered with blood and filth. How could I pray to the Lord of storm and lightning? No, mother, you are the one to pray. Go to Athena's shrine, the queen of plunder. Go with offerings, gather the old mobile woman, and take a robe, the largest, the loveliest robe that you can find throughout the royal halls. A gift that far and away you prize most yourself and spread it out across the sleek haired goddess knees. Then promise to sacrifice twelve heifers in her shrine, yelling new nerve broken if only she'll pity Troy. The children's wives and all our helpless children, if only she'll hold Delmedes back from the holy city, that wild spearman that invincible headlong carol. Now, mother, go to the Queen of Plunder's shrine, and I'll go hunt for Paris. Summon him to fight if the man will hear what I have to say. Let the earth gape and swallow him on the spot. A great curse Olympian Zeus let live and grow in him. For Troy and high-hearted Prim and all his sons, that man, if I could see him bound for the house of death, I could say my heart and had forgot his wrenching grief. But his mother simply turned away to the palace. She gave her servant orders, and out they strode to gather the older noble women through the city. Hikuba went down to a storeroom filled with sand, and there they were, Broaded, beautiful robes, the work of Sidonian women, magnificent Paris brought those women back himself from Sidon. Sailing the open seas on the same long voyage, he swept Helen off, her famous father's child. Lifting one from the lot, Hecuba brought it out for great Athena's gift, the largest, loveliest, richly worked and like a star it glistering deep beneath the others. Then she made her way with a file of noble women rushing in her train. Once they reached Athena's shrine on the city crest, the beauty Theona opened the doors to let them in. Theseus' daughter, the horseman, Antenor's wife, and Athena's priestess, chosen by the children. Then, with a shrill wail, they all stretched their arms to Athena as Athena, her face radiant, lifting the robe on high, spread it out across the sleek hair goddess knees, a prey to the daughter of mighty father Zeus. Queen Athena, shield of a city, glory of goddesses, now shattering the spear of Diomedes. That wild man hurled him headlong down from the shrine gates. At once we will sacrifice twelve heifers in your shrine, 
yearning near, near, near broken, if only you pity Troy, the Troy wives and all our helpless children. But Athena refused to hear Theno's prayers. And while they prayed to the daughter of mighty Zeus, Hector approached the house of Paris. Sumptuous house he built himself with the finest mason of the day, master builders famed in the fertile land of Troy. They raised his sleeping chamber, house and court, adjoining premiums and Hector's aloft the city heights. Now, Hector, dear to Zeus, strode through the gates, clutching a thrusting lance, eleven forearms long. The bronze tip of the weapon shone before him, ringed with a golden hoop to grip the shaft. And there in the bedroom Hector came on Paris, polishing fondly his splendid battle gear. His shield and breastplate turned over and over his long curved bow, and there was Helen of Argos, sitting with all the women of the house, directing the rich embroidered work they had in hand. Seeing Paris, Hector raked his brother with insults, singing totems. What on earth are you doing? Oh, how wrong it is, this anger you keep smoldering in your heart. Look, your people dying around the city, the steep walls, dying in arms. And all for you, the battle cries and the fighting flaring up around the citadel. You'd be the first to lash out at another anywhere you saw hanging back from this, this hateful wall. Up with you, before all Troy is tortured to cinder here and now, and Paris magnificent as a god, replied. Ah, oh, Hector, you criticize me fairly, yes, nothing unfair beyond what I deserve, and so I will try to tell you something. Please, bear with me, hear me out. It is not so much from anger or outrage at our people that I keep to my room so long. I only wanted to plunge myself in grief, but just now my wife was bringing me around, her winning words urging me back to battle. And it strikes me, even me, as the better way, victory shifts. You know, now one man, now another. So come, wait while I get this war gear on, or you go on ahead and I will follow. I think I can overtake you. Hector, helmet flashing, answered nothing, and Helen spoke to him now, her soft voice welling up. My dear brother, dear to me, bitch that I am, vicious, scheming, horror to freeze the heart. Oh, how I wish that first day my mother brought me into the light. Some black whirlwind had rushed me out of the mountains or into the surf where the rowing breakers crash and drag and the waves had swept me off before all this had happened. I'm going to stop here today and continue next time. Thank you for watching.